What's up guys, welcome to the Tier 1 Concealed YouTube channel. I am Miles and today we have hopefully an informational video for you. Uh, we are going to address something that has been asked numerous times in comments, DMs, emails, Facebook messages. Pretty much across the board we get this question a lot. Uh, what is the difference and what is best between ported, comped, factory, etc. So we're going to take a look at that today in a pretty non-scientific, as good as we can do way. Uh, with a few different gun setups, a few different brands and various things so we can just run in front of the high speed camera and to the best that we can see what works best. So let's go look at some setups real quick. All right, so obviously when you start to compare ported, comped, or just factory nothing, there are some pros and cons to all of them. Uh, obviously ported is going to be shorter than comped. Comped, depending on how you look at it, has a little more leverage from being further out on the barrel. Uh, comped you also might not lose muzzle velocity, which with ported you will probably lose a little bit, arguably negligible depending on who you talk to. Um, and then factory is just gonna be a workhorse. There's not anything special to malfunction, go wrong, come loose, anything. So that's probably in most people's eyes gonna be the most reliable. So we're gonna check out some setups right here. As you can see, this is just Glock stuff and there's tons of options. These are all different companies. These two are the same, different styles. For the most part, they're gonna be pretty similar. There's micro comps, there's standard size comps, which all these are, there's two port comps, there's crazier competition comps, there's stuff all across the board. So we're just gonna choose one of these and do it. But we have factory, no porting. It's just completely stock. This is ported, this one's from Mod K. This one's comped, we actually aren't gonna run this comp. Uh, just because we're going to stick to the same frame and slide setup as much as possible with all of the guns, all the different brands and everything. We're going to try to change as little as possible between tests. If we can, just barrel and ported or comped is what we're going to do. Same spring, same slide, same frame. And then if we go down here, we have Smith & Wesson over here. We're going to try factory barrel, ported barrel, comped barrel. We have OZ9 in this bay and same as the other setups, we have nothing ported, comped. This is actually originally a two port comp that has a lot of rounds through it and the middle bar broke. So now it's just a big single port comp. And then we have the SIG 365 and we have factory nothing ported and then this is factory comped. So lots of options to try uh, along with just trying to stick with the same slide and frame for everything. We're also gonna stick with the same shooter for each type of gun. So someone's gonna run all the Glocks, someone's gonna run all the SIG stuff, etc. That way it's eliminating as many variables as possible for you guys. After we do all of the normal stuff, we have a surprise here, and that is the Swamp Thing revolver. What, what are you what doing in my swamp? What, 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 what? This belongs to our camera guy, and uh, I'm pretty sure this was done with a bandsaw, but we're trying this porting. We've got two different revolvers there, the same, but obviously you can't swap a slider barrel with a revolver, but they are the same barrel length and pretty much the same setup. So we're gonna try Swamp Thing versus Stock. Okay, welcome guys to the Office of Scientific Recoil Studies. Um, I will, I'm going to take you through my step-by-step -step process on finding the angles of recoil with all these different uh, guns and their various barrel configurations. So anyways, uh, this is Premiere, uh, the, the video editing software we're using. I don't know a lot about this stuff, but I did my best. So what we did is we put two files of just a, a solid red line on the video um, and so we could we could change the angles right so we basically lined up the first file this red line with the slide as best we could directly before the shot breaks so line that up found the baseline right and that that's going to change after every shot just a little bit so we did this for literally every single shot fired and I took this frame by frame and found the uh, steepest angle that the slide achieved, right? Um, so you kind of had to watch it a few times. And then I put the second line right at that steepest angle, which is right about here. 
And in this software, you are able to see the angle in relation to the horizon, right? Um, perfectly horizontal. So we see that this first line is a negative 0.4 degrees. And then the second line at the highest that that slide, uh, that the highest angle that slide achieved is negative 16.2 degrees. So you just subtract the the two angles, right? The lower one from the higher one, if they're both on the on the same side of zero, right? So these ones were both negative. So 16.2 minus uh, 0.4, that gives you the uh, maximum angle of a 15.8. So we went through all the shots, found those, um, put the, the, the angle and degrees on each after each shot. And then at the end, after six, we did an average of those. So writing all these down, um, going through, this was actually pretty interesting. And it kind of went along with what we were predicting and what we were feeling while we we're actually shooting these. Um, and it, and the, the findings were pretty uh, conclusive as to where stock comped and ported barrels kind of um, how, how those feel and how how they you know reciprocate right but this is just our findings um, we're definitely scientists but we're not like super professional scientists so take that for what it is go experiment with your own barrels too i mean we all we all shoot quite a bit and we have fairly good recoil management already so uh, there wasn't a whole lot of differences um, you can really feel the difference way more than you can see it in these videos so keep that in mind your results may vary i'm um, first up i'm running the p365 it's actually on x macro frame um, but first up is just the stock barrel, no ports, no nothing. So we're each gonna do six shots at around a half second split. So one, two, three, four, five, six, just to keep it consistent across the board. And that way we can compare better. Okay, so I'm gonna swap it out for this X macro slide. This is the factory ports. I'm gonna keep the same recoil spring just so it stays nice and consistent. Throw that guy in. And let's go do six more. Okay, so this is SIG's factory comp. It's basically just a 365 barrel in an XL slide with just these little two ports on. I've never shot this. I'm curious to see how it does. I've heard a lot of good things, so we'll see. All right, now I'm gonna swap it out for this ported barrel right here. Keep the same recoil spring and everything just to stay consistent. Pop this guy out. Throw it in. And if you didn't know, 365 XL slides work perfect on the macro frame. It's the same, same slide. All right, next up, we got the Lucky 7s by Monsoon. This is what I carry every day. Pretty flat shooter, but obviously we'll see. Let's check it out. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about 
kind of what I thought about it. So we'll start with the stock barrel. Feels exactly like my 365 XL. I actually like the recoil impulse. It's not bad. I think it's it's way better on an XL slide than it is a 365 because it's just that little bit of barrel length. It doesn't snap as much and it's good. So that wasn't bad. Shot a pretty good group. Move over to the X macro. Uh, to be 100% honest, I didn't really like it. Um, I don't know exactly how much the X macro goes for, but I know it's more than a regular XL. So if you have like an XL right now and you're like, oh, the comp is cool. I feel like it didn't really work that well. Obviously the slow-mo will show. I'm sure I felt a little bit less recoil, but for that extra money, I would almost go and send your gun out and get ported. There's a lot of companies that do it. This one's Monsoon Tactical, but this is what I carry. And I think the slow-mo will show how much more effective the porting is compared to this X macro. Um, all in all, if I had to rank them, obviously the porting would go first. Honestly, I'd probably go with the stock barrel second, just cause I like that little bit extra barrel length. This is just a 365 barrel. For whatever reason, I just didn't, didn't like it. This would be my third choice. So yeah, that's it for me. Let's, uh, Kick it on over to the next person. Hey guys, I'm Aaron. This is my OZ9 with a Trichicon SRO. Right now I have the stock Zevtech barrel in there. It is the stock Glock 17 length, no ports, nothing fancy there. I'll be shooting that first. Then I will move on to the, um, this is a OEM Glock. 17 length barrel that I sent to Monsoon Tactical to have the Lucky 7s porting done to it. This is typically what I'll carry. And then I will move on to the, this is another Zevtech uh, threaded barrel. I have the primary machine uh, dual port comp on there, but like Miles My mentioned early, earlier, I've sent a lot of rounds through this one so that uh, that center bar broke out. So it's just one big port now, but it still works great. Um, I have shot this a bunch and I didn't notice any change in recoil or functionality when that piece broke, but that will be last. Okay, so let's, let's go see how this one does. Okay, OZ9 with the stock barrel in there. This is just a pretty smooth, uh, soft shooting gun to begin with. Um, it's been a long time since I shot the stock non-ported barrel and it, it's pretty smooth, pretty soft, so um, can only improve from here, theoretically. Okay, so I'm putting the uh, primary machine comp on the threaded barrel here and it has these two set screws down here on the bottom that you tighten. And normally I would uh, thread lock the whole thing um, and then thread lock these as well. But since I will be removing this after shooting it, I'm not going to do that. But one of the issues that I've found with um, comps, most comps that use set screws and things like this is it's just kind of a hassle. There's, there's more pieces that you can lose. And sometimes with these tiny set screws, they're really easy to strip. So I'm trying to be careful when I'm tightening these. There have been a, a, some companies to come out with a much simpler, easier way to attach a thread on compensator. And those are awesome. Um, it seems like these are kind of a little bit outdated, but this is what I have. So we're gonna work with it. Okay, uh, I went with the threaded barrel and compensator uh, for the second round and I'm saving the ported for last uh, simply because I think the ported is going to shoot flatter and softer than the thread on comp. I've never shot the OZ9 with a thread on compensator so, so we'll see how it goes.
threaded barrel out, ported barrel by Monsoon Tactical in. And I actually sent him the slide with the barrel so he could get everything lined up perfectly with the window that was already here in the OZ9 uh, slide. So this is a pretty, pretty cool setup. And I'm predicting that it is going to at least appear on camera to be the flattest out of the three options here. Um, but side note, if you think you shoot flat, you don't, at least not under a high speed camera. But if you can shoot fast, shoot accurately, does recoil even matter? I don't know. Let us know down below. Okay, we got the uh, ported barrel. Again, this is the Lucky 7s by Monsoon Tactical. Super interested, uh, super interested to see how that looks in the high-speed camera. To me, this one feels the best. It's definitely the loudest, um, but I think the softest by far. But from our stand, from my standpoint too, watching on the monitor, it definitely looks the flattest without slowing anything down yet. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, for what it's worth, uh, if that's what you're into, I think porting is a good route to go. Okay, so I think as we all predicted, the, uh, the ported barrel performed the best as far as recoil goes. Um, the comped barrel was uh, significantly nicer than the stock barrel, um, but they all shoot relatively soft. All right, so it's my turn and I'm going to be shooting my M&P 2.0. We're gonna start with the factory barrel like everyone else did. And then we're gonna move to the comp. This is a comp by Rogue Gunworks, their micro comp. And then last, we're gonna finish with the Lucky 7 ports from Monsoon Tactical. All right, we're gonna start off with the stock barrel. No comps, no ports on the M&P. Six shots, <laughs> gotta remember that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna switch out to the comped barrel. This comp is super cool because it has just this little detent thing right here to time it. So I'll just push that in with my fingernail, take the comp off. And then we'll go to the slide, take the stock barrel out. Um, one thing I wanna mention is it's gonna look pretty flat with the stock barrel on there just because M&Ps are they have a really nice recoil impulse that I am a huge fan of. So let's see how this comp does. But yeah, pretty cool system. It just goes on and times itself. So clicks on and that's it. All right, now we are on the Rogue Gunworks micro comp on the M&P. That actually feels really good. And then we'll go to the Monsoon Lucky 7s. Okay, now we're on to the Monsoon Lucky 7s on the M&P. I like those.
so noticeably the flattest. Yeah, by far, by far. <laughs> I like the ports. There's some debate on velocity loss with ports. There, there is velocity loss. You can't deny that. But, like, from the tests I've seen other people do and the tests I've done, it's at most, like, very most on the high end, 100 FPS. And when you're considering that this is like a personal defense gun, you're not going to be doming people at 50, 60 yards. That velocity loss is marginal compared to the increase in performance that you get. So. It, you can you can debate, but I think it's worth it. All right, so after seeing that, you can see why I am a huge fan of the Monsoon Lucky 7s. I think it gives a significant reduction in recoil. But this, this comp is really awesome for its size. There's obviously drawbacks between running all three. You have a little bit of added length, uh, some extra moving parts. With the ports, you lose some velocity, but I said what I thought about losing velocity earlier in a defensive handgun and running stock is always good. I would always say if you're going to go ports or comps, get good with your recoil control first, the stock barrel, just because comps don't fix, well comps and ports don't fix bad recoil control. They help good recoil control. So just remember that when you're going to start modifying how your gun recoils. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do the 19X. Uh, the, the only way we could keep this consistent was with this slide. It does have a window that could be accounted for technically, but um, we will go with the stock barrel and then we'll go with the, uh, this agency comp set up right here. And then, hey, why not go with the comp and ports? That, that could be interesting, we'll see. All right. This is the stock barrel. Okay, round two. We got the comp on here. It's an agency comp. Uh, we were gonna do this one, but we decided to go with the one without the tines or whatever you call those things. That's a, that's a word. Yeah. It'll work. Anyways, let's head over there and try this compound, see how we do. All right, again, we're gonna go with the comp setup. Uh, we'll have to go look at the footage, but it didn't feel very much different, to be honest. Let's go through, throw the port on here. Okay. Got the port on here. I don't even know what this port's from. What's it from? Mod K. What? It's a Mod K. Mod K. Cool. It's got the, the dual row. It's pretty cool, actually. It's called Game Changer. This is called the Game Changer. And that's one of the original companies doing port. Interesting fact. Let's see how it does. Yep. Here we go. That was a very noticeable difference. Let's go try uh, the comp and the port together. Comps and port. Okay, bye. Uh, I'm just throwing on the uh, comp and, or vice versa, sorry. Ports and comp setup. I have no idea how this is gonna behave, but it should be interesting or not. We'll see. Okay, we got the ported barrel on here. Also the comp from uh, Southwest Precision. We'll see how she goes. This should be interesting. Here we go. Didn't go. <laughs> I will say this. I didn't feel any muscle rise at all. 
Um, I know for me and several other of us, when it comes to comps, I've never changed a recoil spring. Everyone on the internet is like, hey, you gotta change the recoil spring, blah, 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 spring weights, this and that. I've never changed one. This might be the first time you might actually need to. And you may not, you may be able to see it when I was changing stuff earlier, but this spring has seen many moons. Let's give this baby a second run through and see what happens. We didn't change anything. We're just crossing our fingers this time. Oh, I didn't, oh. Short strong. Story of my life. All right, uh, I may or may not have been limp wristing it a little bit. Uh, let's see how this goes. Yeah, that worked. And that, that looks so flat from over here. I don't feel like it moved at all. <laughs> <laughs> wow, did we just figure out a cool thing? Yeah, that's science. All right, so we we went through the three different variations. Surprise, surprise, or maybe not. The port and comp was actually pretty slick. Uh, took a little bit of finesse with the grip, but uh, it ended up shooting pretty consistent. You'll see that in the high speed footage. So check it out, let us know what you think. Okay, now we have a special treat for you guys. We have the Swamp Gun. <laughs> the 38 Special Double Action Revolver that someone took an angle grinder to, bandsaw, whatever, and did a knockoff Walmart chunk port. <laughs> so we're gonna shoot that, but we also have another 38 Special to compare it to. They're not the exact model, but a, almost exactly the same length barrel, so it's a viable comparison. So, hope I don't die. The ammo we're using is uh, 124 grain, yep. is that right? Plus P. That was the only 38 special ammo we had, but we're gonna roll with it. All right, let's make sure my grip's right. I got the swamp gun and I'm kind of scared, but there we go. Gotta bear down on this one. It did feel a little bit, a little bit better than the other one. It felt a lot of heat. <laughs> so as you guys can see, there's a pretty obvious and significant difference between some of these setups, porting versus comps. Uh, I know where I personally sit. I think porting is a softer platform for majority of things. There's obviously gonna be exceptions to everything, but for now that's the camp I'm in. Let us know where you guys end up if you think porting is better or comped is better. And also let us know if you want us to revisit the uh, ported and comped gun. See if we can play with some spring weights and maybe make that thing run perfect. Also, a huge thank you to the Armory for letting us come and film here. So don't forget, comment what you wanna see. Subscribe to the channel, buy a holster. We'll see you on the next one.